found out about the biosphere too from a TED talk with Jane Pointer, who was one of eight people that lived inside of a hermetically sealed environment where they had to produce their own food, oxygen, use recirculated water to try and survive off of the land in an artificial environment. This experiment started in 1984. Space Biosphere Ventures spent $150 million to build Biosphere 2 because Biosphere 1 is the Earth. The goal was to not only understand the Earth's biosphere better, but to experiment with the possibility of creating a sustainable habitat in space. In 91, eight people were locked inside for two years got out in 1993. There's three, a little over three acres of a sealed environment inside of there. Could you imagine coming in here, knowing that you're not coming out for two years? basic living arrangement was a, lo a loft, a studio apartment, like a room on the bottom, a bed on top, and two people would share a bathroom. So this is a half acre of land where the crews would grow their food. That's, that center patch right there is what we were looking out at from the top where the apartments and kitchen were. So this facility is still being used for research and what they're doing now is trickling water through a controlled environment of volcanic rock and figuring out how it breaks down and turns into soil for the world. Is that the right one? I got you the wrong one, sorry. Inside of a controlled environment like this, a rainforest, they were able to close it off completely pump it full of CO2 and found out that the plants can absorb an environment of up to 600 to 650 parts per million and the earth is at about 400 right now. Which is fascinating because in this controlled environment we can study the exterior, you know, the real world in a way that, that you can't. That you can't when you don't have control over you know, the climate. Climate's what we expect, and weather is what actually happens. So in the ocean, Columbia University did the same thing and pumped it full of carbon dioxide to figure out when a artificial coral reef in the middle would die, and it was about 600 parts per million. Susan Gates from Chasing Coral is going to be putting in a hybrid species and seeing if it will uh, survive in their tank down there. This is, this is fascinating. There's some good stuff going on here. So learning how to live on space just turned into a really great ecological research laboratory. thought that it was powered by its own electricity, but they use diesel or some type of generators requiring fossil fuel and they're tied into the grid. However, the building was sealed so tight that the engineers thought with the heating and cooling of the air inside that the windows would explode. Oh, the condensation is now growing. See the lung. Seems like a giant balloon to solve the problem. It is a giant balloon of sorts. It's an aluminum disc in the middle connected to rubber around the outside that creates a donut 
underneath a geodesic dome on top. And all the water in the center is just condensation stored from the cooling units. It's not necessary anymore because it's not closed. But it's just such an interesting room. I want to shoot a movie in here. It was actually coming down as we walked out because of the negative pressure from opening the door. And then it'll shoot back up. Three identical massive metal hill slopes uh, with 200 tons of finely crushed volcanic soil on each of those hillsides. Each hillside has about a meter of soil in it, three feet three inches. And also each hillside has 1,800 sensors and samplers above the soil at various steps in the soil and below the soil. Each hillside has 10 load cells below so we can measure every drop of water that comes down that hillside. underneath the, the ocean, 27 feet deep, and then there's glass windows looking in at the coral and a few fish. I hate to say it, there's some popular odors that can show up how to do the indoor thing real well. Like sometimes you just gotta give it up and ask for help. All this research that's been going on here for the last 30 years has benefited the world in a lot of different ways. But when we actually go to Mars and take a concept like this little model behind me, set it on another planet and grow food to survive there, that will be that's going to change the world. There's a lot of... I, I've been really excited seeing this place. And... Kind of lived up to my expectations. The original people being, being sealed inside... Well, I mean... There were some very smart men... That decided... Oh, we know farmers can live off of what they grow. And that scientists needs to focus on that instead of working their ass off to maintain a house and a garden all day. So very quickly they realized, yes, humans can live indoors. The plants will produce enough oxygen to create a sustainable cycle and you can't exist. And then everything got converted to a, to a research facility and it's brilliant. Casey Neistat sponsored by Hostess. 